Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. And today, this is an audio video because it's the wee wee hours of the morning in my house and I have a very full weekend planned. I'm doing some work with some of you. I'm hosting some of you on a live stream retreat weekend. So I got up early to do some self-care, meditation, journaling, etc. to be able to be in good vibrational frequency to host. And as I'm doing that, I'm about an hour in this morning, and something came across to my mind. And that would be something that's been on my mind for about a day or so, and that would be the death of Prince Philip, the recent passing of Prince Philip. And you all know, if you've watched Above Life Channel for any period of time, that I do enjoy the royal family across the pond as I'm in the United States, and I love the UK. I have never been, would love to go, and so I have an American's perspective, of course, on the royal family, and I have done channeling sessions with Princess Diana, Lady Diana. You can look that up here as well. We've had some great conversations with her in the afterlife, just lovely, just absolutely lovely to connect with, very polite, very kind, just and easy to talk to as a mother. And I just felt the need to talk about Prince Philip. Usually when someone crosses over into the afterlife, I wait to channel, to do a formal channel. And I don't consider this a formal channel. (laughs) And from time to time, I don't wait. It just kind of depends on the spirit, the energy, my energy, the world energy. It just, it just, if the stars align, let's say that. Hard and fast rules are tough to have when you're psychic because things are always fluid and moving. That's what energy is, fluid and moving. And with Prince Philip, he has a dynamic personality. I have to tell you, (laughs) I really have to tell you. I can understand why people are so enamored with him. He has a huge personality, like his personality, very charming. He feels very good looking. Now, all I know of him is the images of him as an older man or maybe historical photographs that that will be shared of him. Um, And I'm trying to think. I did watch The Crown, I think, a couple of years ago. (laughs) horrible horrible right horrible stereotypes all that stuff not even an accurate depiction but I watched like two seasons of it I think one season two seasons something like that I well the point is I didn't really like it I didn't like the show so I didn't continue to watch it so obviously you know dramatization so that's all I know of Prince Philip which is not much except that as I'm sitting here and doing my meditations I am totally drawn to he's definitely got a magnetic personality I can tell you that very he's charming but he's and he's witty and he's just kind of sincere he feels that way and I just wanted to share that I wanted to share some comments about him so I can also tell you which is going to be super controversial but I'm going to say it anyway Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it anyway. I don't think it was all roses and cherries in that marriage. Let me just tell you that. Um, Like with any marriage, can you, they were married for like 50, 70, something a long time. Okay. They were together for a really long time. The guy was 99 when he left, right? That's a long time. I have to say something about that. So he says something about his, when I had just had this conversation with him um, before I grabbed my recording to record for you he said something about his age 99 and he also said something about his marriage marriage is not all it's cracked up to be it's not easy and he says I don't think I made it look easy not that not that we made it look easy but it's easy to look back and kind of see it as this dreamy love affair this wonderful perfect kind of rosy thing and he says well I appreciate that a great deal that gives me far too much credit he says this is Prince Philip. That gives me far too much credit. Well, I appreciate that a great deal. It gives me far too much credit. And that it wasn't always. They didn't always get along. They they did fight. They did disagree. They did have disputes, disturbances. And and I don't want to be 
I'm not going to go into their marital relationship as far as faithfulness and such. I'm not going to do that in this audio. And I don't know if I would do that in a channeling session. I just don't think it's very respectful, especially right now, to do that. But I can say that he is he is one that would get bored easily but find ways to entertain himself he would be somebody that would be fun to be around because he would keep things interesting and although he would get bored easily I also think that he could be quite patient and not feel rushed even though his personality could seem a little antsy, that's what we would say, antsy, um, or hyper, or enthusiastic. I think, I think he was intelligent, but I don't know if that was well known, that he's intellectually, like, smart, and that he could, it almost feels as though, like, I see him reading, like, books that are, um, quite involved um I don't know if it's philosophical or liter great literature or what it is but very and in- quite involved he says quite involved and I also feel like he really enjoyed traveling and he shows me like Africa or the content of Africa something like that and and a beautiful just beautiful lands and just an incredible sense of of beauty in that in that continent and he just shows me Africa and so that's I mean it's be- it's really beautiful I could just stop here right now and breathe it in and the colors and the reds and the, he says you would not believe the sky the color of the sky is like nothing I've ever seen he says it's just un- I don't know if it's the air if it's the the environment, the climate, but it's, he says, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's so beautiful. And he literally shows me like these, almost like fire in the sky, like streams of fire across the sky. These deep oranges and these reddish hues. It's just gorgeous. It's really beautiful. And it's, wow, it's captivating. Yeah, I can see that. He definitely has an appreciation for, 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 for the beauty of things, he notices things. He notices. I think that's part of what endears him to people is that he notices, he takes notice. And he was not perfect, I'm going to say that. And he says, I wasn't perfect. You know, he kind of sees himself almost as like a clown or that kind of a thing, like a tension breaker, you know, uses humor a lot is what he's showing me. But he says, and bad humor at that. He says, poor humor, really bad humor. He says, bad jokes, bad, bad jokes, bad humor. And he says, but that's sort of the point, isn't it, really, to distract from the seriousness of the situation and what is really going on? And if someone is focusing on me and something perhaps, although uh, something that is a little bit risque or inappropriate that um, perhaps has some kind of a connotation, he says, doesn't that then do the job by taking the focus off the tenseness of the situation and he's like saying I don't mind being a scapegoat like that's quite his quite his role in many ways and although the queen could roll her eyes at him many 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 times and think oh come on come on this is not the time to be that doing that everything that he he did was with good intent with the intent to help her even if sometimes it very much could backfire and did very much did egg on your face kind of a scenario he shows me he literally shows me a picture of him with a beautiful dress uniform on and egg on his face so he says you can't be afraid to get messy there's quite a bit of messiness here he says there's quite a bit of messes that are made and then he says he's so funny because he says he's like not the cleanup man either he says he says there's quite enough messes to be made is what he says (laughs) <laughs> Prince Philip. <laughs> There's quite enough messes to be made. He wanted to say something about his 99th year. Okay, so he died 90, at age 99. And he says to me, of course, 
Why would I be so predictable as to live to a hundred? A full century? Why would that be? Would that be climactic? No, it would not. And wouldn't you think I've had about enough? Hmm? Haven't you? Ha- haven't you all had about enough of me? He says, "Haven't you all had about enough of me? Isn't it about time that I I retire?" <laughs> he says, "Haven't you all had about enough of me?" And ninety nine, of course, he's like, "Of course, he's going to do something unpredictable." Of course, he's going to leave before he's 100 because, because that's what everybody wants and that's expected and that's the, oh, give the people what they want. And that is not him, not directly. He's indirect. And so in this way, he's actually indirectly supporting the royal family, especially with all the tumultuous year that they've had and the challenges within their family that they've had. This is an opportunity then for Prince Harry to fly back to the United Kingdom to be present for their family memorial. And that's something that... It's interesting because I get the feeling that that hasn't been decided yet 100%, but I feel like he will go back. It like literally feel like he will go back. I don't... Like Prince Philip gives me this vibe that Harry feels responsible to be there for his family, to support his family, to be in unity, especially for the Queen, and because he had a respect for Prince Philip, and yet he feels a duty to be there, but he also is concerned about attracting extra attention and bringing more media and more like like attention that is not needed for this type of a situation like he doesn't want to make it a media circus or he doesn't want to make it worse for the queen and his family as they're mourning because he comes but I don't think that's going to keep him away per se I think he will go and I think he's going to go by himself is how it feels and I think that that's not I think that that's more about um, the health situation and just being responsible and also comfort level for his wife, Megan, as well. I think that's probably multiple, multiple reasons why it would make more sense for her to just stay home. Plus, she's expecting a baby. I mean, they're expecting a baby, and I'm not sure when she's due, so it wouldn't be, I want to say June, but I don't know if that's right. So I feel as though it makes sense for her to stay. Plus it also to be to be really transparent here. I feel like almost she might be having some difficulty with her pregnancy or she might have like, and it almost feels like this pressure on your organs kind of thing. Like, I don't know if she has like the preeclampsia, the high blood pressure, or she has the, the placenta previa or something with the placenta or whatever. It feels like she has difficult pregnancy right now and, or she's had difficult pregnancy. So she's high risk, it feels like. So she needs to stay put anyway if she can so I don't see her traveling but Prince Philip doesn't like oh don't make a don't make a fuss don't make a fuss but at the same time he understands that this is a perfect opportunity his death is a perfect opportunity so like did you choreograph this my friend kind of you know what I mean I feel like hmm Prince Philip did you actually think okay well if I die when I die then the family will come back together because they often do when someone dies when there's a death in the family and they're grieving they come together and they're much more kinder to each other although they will be a bit angry or irritable with one another because that's what will happen with Charles because Charles is you know his personality is a bit gruff at times and he can be very straight and very sharp tongue and misunderstood a bit almost, you guys. It literally feels like he doesn't have a lot of social, I don't know. His social skills have definitely been honed over the years, but with his boys, he doesn't really know how to manage things because it's awkward, you know? Um, And so it's, so Philip just kind of rolls his eyes. Like Philip has been a buffer, it feels like, a buffer. And it does feel like there's tension between Prince Charles and his, his, his sons. And I think there's just as much tension with William as there is Harry because you can feel the energy. Harry's just obvious about it. Like Harry won't put up with it. Harry's like, no, I'm not going to put up with this. I'm only going to put up with this for so long. And William, because of the duty and the in line for the throne, he, he really feels an incredible obligation, duty, service to 
to just stay the course and that kind of a thing. So he kind of shuts himself off from it and doesn't try to look the other way and not deal with it, not think about it. And in particularly, it is, by the way, everyone, in case you weren't noticing the obvious here, the energy is about Prince Charles and Camilla, those two being together. That's the that's the piece that's uh, every time I see the boys and I look at the family and I see Charles with Camilla and I know that it's like been everything's accepted and that they were in love before he even met Diane I get all that I understand all that but it feels from the boys perspective like it's it's just this uh, it's like a reminder of the brokenness of the family of the separateness between their father and them because they were close to their mother and now there's this other person who is close to their father and yet it almost it brings the boys to this other side so they feel more distant and I think that they probably worked on their relationship but it's a working relationship it's not like a father-son relationship or parent-child relationship it's a working relationship and so I think it's important to understand these things because this is a real family with real family dynamics and these are humans just like celebrities are as above life channel we channel celebrities all the time they're human beings with families and they're trying to raise their kids and they're buying food at the grocery store too. They might get it delivered a different way or prepared a different way, but they're eating food like you are and I are. And they're you know doing the normal day-to-day things and they have to think about school for their kids and they have to think about their health care and they have to, I mean, they have to think about, you know, budgets, money. They have to think about things that we have to think about. I mean, they're, they're human. They're human. It, it can be easy to make someone who's a celebrity or famous, put them on a pedestal, put them into an iconic stature and expect robotic things from them, perfection, which doesn't exist even for ourselves in our own lives. And that's part of why Above Life Channel exists is to help us understand how from the afterlife perspective, like with Prince Philip and his, his, (laughs) his incredible character, (laughs) characteristics, his personality is funny. Um, That, we have multi dimensions to us. We're dynamic. We're not one sided. We're not just a public figure or just a private figure. There are many parts to us. And the people who are, who come to fame, do lose a great deal of their privacy and private life. And I think that we all take that for granted. And Sure, you can say it's a trade-off and you pay for it and you get you get paid for it and you get this and you get that, but until you're walking in their shoes or in their shoes, you really don't have any idea of what it feels like. So it's easy to stand outside and judge, but at the same time, or wish that you were them. <laughs> and it's just opportunities like this, connecting with the afterlife, give us a great deal of perspective about our own lives. And so I hope you'll <clears throat> connect with that through this this conversation about Prince Philip with some tidbits of, of information from him as well. So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel. Thanks for listening to this audio video. And I look forward to continue to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. This is your life after all. Remember that. And it's your job to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.